In this video, we're going to go ahead and look at spheres in higher dimensions, with a particular emphasis on three-dimensional spheres and how to visualize them. In order to get there, we're going to start with a smaller dimensional version and then ramp up to the three-dimensional sphere. So let's begin with a unit circle given by this algebraic equation. Uh, and the unit sphere would be given with one extra variable, usually denoted z. But what happens if we want to go up to the next dimension? Well, we'd have to add another variable, right? So this is our I guess our three-dimensional analog for what a sphere might be? Well, okay, so let's call it a three-dimensional sphere, or a three-sphere for short. The three comes from there, are, there being four variables and only one equation that uses them, so the object we create is three-dimensional. Let me go ahead and show you a different way of thinking about the circle. It might be a little, I guess, obvious to think about it this way, but at the same time, it's a really helpful analog for when we want to move into higher dimensions. So we can think about our circle as being divided into two semicircles, right? We get a top half and a bottom half, right? And these top and bottom halves you can get from solving for one of the variables in your equation, right? So a little squiggle line will be the top half and the dashed line will be the bottom half. And then the circle is obtained by gluing these two semicircles together at their endpoints. And this circle is a one-dimensional object, right? two variables, one equation, so we're going to call this a one-dimensional sphere, or a circle. Now we'll call this S1, don't you dare say S to the 1 or S to the first power, such a new move. But if we go on to a sphere, we can go ahead and play the same game, but in this case we'll go ahead and draw our unit sphere, give it a nice little equator, dash dash dash, because, well, we like to dash things that we would be, uh, we can't really see from the front. So just like before, we're going to go ahead and create two hemispheres now. We'll have a nice golden one on top and a blue one on the bottom. So this uh, is going to be our template, so to speak, for how we create our three-dimensional uh, sphere. So we'll have a top and bottom half of this object given by solving for, our, for one of our variables in our equation. Top uh, positive branch will be the top, negative branch will be the bottom, and again, we're going to glue these pieces together along their common equator. And this is a two-dimensional sphere that we'll call S2. But what happens when we want to move into higher dimensions? As you might guess, we're going to go ahead and play that same game, but we don't really have a picture because, well, unfortunately, we would have to be able to graph in four dimensions. So this is exactly why we think about these objects in two pieces because we can visualize the smaller, uh, smaller dimensional pieces better than graphing the entire thing together. Again, top half will be a positive square root branch, the bottom half will be a negative. Then for the circle, remember that we wound up having uh, a level set at zero, and that defined a sort of equator for the circle. Right? It was only a pair of points, but it defines what we're going to call a gluing locus. And that gluing locus is just a pair of points here, but it really is an analog for a zero-dimensional sphere. It's just a, a pair of uh, two disjoint points. Now, we can get something very similar for the sphere, right? The zero locus of the equator, right, the gluing locus, is going to be at z equals zero. So that does, in fact, define a circle, and the circle is the gluing locus, which is just an equator. So for S3, on the other hand, we're going to play the same game, but set w equal to zero, and that is going to give us the equation of, well, look at that, a sphere. So the gluing locus is a sphere, and this is our analog for defining an equator. So if we can't actually graph this three-dimensional, four-dimensional object, whatever it's going to be, well, we have to find some other way of visualizing it. So one way that we can do this is by using the contours or level sets of our three-dimensional sphere, in order to kind of break this guy up into smaller pieces. So consider now slicing this sphere with horizontal planes. Right at z equals zero, we get our usual equator. If we go up to, say, a different value, maybe uh, z equals a quarter, or z equals minus one, then the plane is only going to be able to slice so much of that sphere. And in fact, you can use the algebraic equation to show you that what you get in the, the intersection is a smaller circle or possibly even just a single point. And if you use a value of z that's outside of the interval from minus 1 to 1, then you're not going to intersect the sphere at all and the equation gives you an empty set. Now, what you want to do is stack these level sets together. 
right? The top half of this the, of the sphere here, the top hemisphere is going to be for the values uh, z between 0 and 1, and the bottom half will be for values of z between minus 1 and 0. And then, of course, we will glue these guys together to create the entire sphere, but look at these two pieces by themselves. They're just two disks. We'll play the same game for S3. So again, we'll have a top half, and this will be for values of w between 0 and 1, and the bottom half where values of w will, between, will be between minus 1 and 0. So let's see what happens if we set w equal to some constant. Well, then 1 minus w squared is still going to be a constant, and this constitutes a level set, and the level sets here are spheres. So let's go ahead and stack these spheres together in some nice, consistent way. For w between 0 and 1, we'll get all these blue spheres, and when we stack them together, what we get is just a ball. Now, you can play the exact same game going the opposite direction for w between minus, minus 1 and 0. You go ahead and stack these guys together, and you get yourself a second ball. And then remember, these two balls have the same black sphere boundary, right? That's, that's the place where w equals 0, so those are the same location. Now, the boundary sphere at w equals 0 is common to both, and this kind of represents an equator in some sense. This is our analog to what an equator looks like in three dimensions. And it might be a fun question to ask yourself where the north and south poles might be for this three-dimensional sphere. Go ahead and leave a comment below and let me know where you think they are. Let's go ahead and start wrapping up this video by showing that our conclusion is that this three-dimensional sphere, S3, Although it's given by this algebraic equation, we really can't graph it in the traditional sense. So what we do is we break this guy up into two unit balls, which are glued together along their common boundary sphere, right? And that boundary sphere acts like an equator. So visually, we're going to take two balls here and take what's called their union. And that union is essentially going to be given by a gluing map, something called a homeomorphism between the two spheres. And for right now, just go ahead and take this to be the identity map. And just to be totally clear here, these two spheres are actually filled, so they are balls that are being glued together. And the total object you can think of in terms of the game Portal, where you kind of jump from one part of space into another through, this little, through a little disk. Now, if we were a little stick figure sitting inside one of these balls and we moved our head, right, or poked our head out the sphere, we would wind up on somewhere on the other side. Now, since we're taking the gluing map to be this identity, well, if we stick our head out, we're going to pop our head out on the other side. And that'll wrap up this video. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content. See you in the next video.